Welcome to a new episode of the Stick and Move podcast. I'm your host, Trey, here with my co-host, Sam. And today we are talking about the three greatest boxing trilogies of all time. So, Sam, go ahead, punch me in the face. What is your third greatest boxing trilogy trilogy ever? Talk to me, brother. Okay, the, the third one is I remember these fights. I, right, I, right. I, I remember these fights. And um, one of them, I was at work, and I had a, it was between um, Israel, uh, Israel Vasquez versus mm. Rafael Marquez. Dude. Dude. Awesome, bro. Awesome. Four fights. Four fights from 2007-2010. Both right? from Mexico, bro. They both right. had their professional debut in 1995, bro. Okay. Right. And, um, and, 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 and I remember hearing about this fight. I had to go see it. I saw the fight. It was one of the greatest wars in boxing Dude, I've ever seen, bro. So underrated and honestly, bro, forgotten, brother. Nobody talks about that trilogy. Go ahead. And sorry, people have sorry. to understand, man. People have to understand this. People have, they fought in seven or six month spans, bro. Mm -hmm. yes, you know did. what I'm saying? They fought in six or seven month spans, and um, they were both highly, you know, anticipated. Mexican superstars that you know they were gonna meet up, blah blah blah, and 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 it was highly anticipated. The ring magazine already knew that this is gonna be the fight of the year, and it was just it was it was rock solid, bro. And right. and the and the first fight, man, in the first fight, it, it was to Marquez. He won by a seventh round where 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 Vasquez couldn't breathe anymore, bro. Yeah. He yeah. got uppercutted, broke his nose in the first round, couldn't breathe. He was telling Freddie Roach, I cannot breathe. Yeah, yeah, I can't breathe, bro. You know, and Freddie Roach made him go in there, fight another round. When he came back, seventh round, bro, he just could not get off the stool. Oh, I think it was the sixth yeah. round, right? At yeah. the end? Yeah, sixth round was the first one. Sixth round knockout, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same as I can't, he, he just couldn't anymore. And and Marquez had won, right? And and even though in this fight, many people were saying that Vasquez, that Vasquez was showing way better skills, bro, way better skills than Marquez has. It's just he could not recover from that that broken nose. And and it's interesting because if I'm not mistaken, the second fight went the distance, and the last one ended early. But bro, from one to twelve, or from one, I think the third fight ended on the third round, right? The the second fight was a, a six round TKO for Vasquez. Oh, the last fight was twelve, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the last fight. I'm getting confused. 12. I'm getting confused. Yeah, but they um, fought in Hidalgo, close to our right. hometown. Yeah, like right, dude. That's like five minute drive from here. But, yeah. dude, those were it, – it bothers me that those fights are forgotten, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. during that era, I mean, we talk about – I mean, there have been many great trilogies the past 34 – you know, boxing history. But that one is often forgotten. And in my opinion, it – even though they didn't, they all didn't go 12 for 12 rounds or 15 rounds back in the day, dude, it was compact – combative wars in the ring from one to whenever the knockout or TKO occurred or the whole 12 rounds, every round was freaking nonstop action, brother. Yeah, man. It was, it Those was, are, it, yeah, was it was, it was, um, 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 a will versus will, bro. Yeah. Everything yeah. they trained for every last drop of sweat, blood, tear, mm -hmm. everything was put in that ring. And and they gave us the, one of the greatest trilogies of all time. I agree with you, brother. That's that's phenomenal. Often forgotten, and people need to go check it. I think they should be on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So people should go check those fights out for sure. So my number three is hey guys, Trey here. If you love today's controversial episode and you want to see our channel grow, please drop a like, subscribe, and also comment. Sam and I are always going back and forth with those commenters on our controversial topics and opinions, and we love it so much. So go ahead 
and hit that like button hit that subscribe most importantly so our channel can grow and we can give you guys the best content as possible sam and i were always uploading multiple videos a week and we want to continue doing that and we need your help so go ahead and subscribe guys and most importantly like i always say don't forget to stick and move baby is a 90s classic bro two heavyweight bangers in holyfield versus riddick bow brother yeah you know starting with the first fight oh, dude we haven't seen a heavyweight clash like that where both of them and it could have gone to any fight you know what i'm saying it could have yes. gone to any fighter if you would have given it to Bo, which he did get the first fight Yes, he deserved it. You would have given it to Holyfield. In my opinion, yes, Holyfield deserved it. That's how tight this first fight was. You know what I'm saying? So what I also found interesting was, dude, Bo came into every fight around 240, 245, brother, while, while Holyfield was about 210, 212-ish around there. Talk about a mismatch in size. But, bro, that that first fight, in my opinion – is what put Evander Holyfield even more into the pantheon of the all-time greats. I think that's the famous fight where Larry Merchant or Lampley said that he is the warrior. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And, and bro, it was just nonstop battling. You know, you go to that second fight. Dude, that second fight had the fan man. Oh, I yeah, remember, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. watching that, bro. Yeah, I remember that seeing that. Friend? I remember yeah. I, I went to go see it at a friend's house, and my friend's dad was a huge uh, Ron Mercer fan. So he would always, you know, heavyweight guy. And we would go watch it. We're like, what is happening? You know, I didn't have HBO. I couldn't afford it back then. So we were watching now at a friend's house. And, dude, that guy, that fan man guy got a bigger beating than what Riddick Bowe was giving Evander Holyfield early on in that fight, brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Causing about a 20, 21 minute delay, bro. And I honestly think that is where Riddick Bo got cold. Because you remember the chatters when the, the beginning of that fight, or even before that fight, when they did the uh the face off the day before, or I think it was two days before. Everybody was saying Bo looks out of shape. And that's where all the shatter the chatter was going, where Bo was not the same guy. Not to mention Evander Holyfield changes his trainer to Emmanuel Stewart now wearing the yellow uh crunk shorts to fight Riddick Bo. And that I don't know, I think because of that fight, that delay, that 20 minute delay, I think uh, Riddick Bo got slow, he got cold and Evander Holyfield was able to take over, brother. You know what I'm saying? And won the rematch. That's just my opinion. But then again, I mean, there's controversy, controversy on that take. But that final fight for me was when Holyfield go, knocks down Riddick Bowe early. The first time Riddick Bowe has ever hit the mat was in that third fight against Evander Holyfield when Riddick Bowe was already cracking Holyfield. Holyfield finds that warrior spirit and knocks down Riddick Bowe for the first time in his career, changes the rounds, and then, unfortunately, Riddick Bowe gets up and then finds Holyfield and knocks him out, and it was a TKO, and that was the end of that fight. So for me, Riddick Bo versus uh, Evander Holyfield was my number three. you have any thoughts on that? Dude, those were some shots, bro. Dude. Those were some shots being thrown, <laughs> monster shots where where you questioned, bro. I remember right. we talked about this in, 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 previous, in a previous video. Like, mm -hmm. what would Mike Tyson do against a prime Riddick Bowe? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Bro. Like, that, that, that dude, I mean, Riddick Bowe, bro, the, his arm link, dude, the guy can hit you across the ring. I mean, mm -hmm. dude, the heart of Holyfield, bro, all that yeah. punishment. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? I mean, when he went down at the end, bro, dude, my heart just sang for Holyfield, man. Because that was yeah, go ahead. Sorry, because it was it was just seeing your superhero, bro. It was seeing mm -hmm. your superhero get his, yeah, like seeing your dad get his, his ass whooped, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it hurt real bad, but yeah, great, great, great fight.
Two of the biggest crimes, in my opinion, and we should we're gonna do a top three biggest uh, what ifs fights that should have happened eventually. Two of the biggest ones, bro, was Riddick Bowe fighting Mike Tyson that we never saw, and Riddick Bowe fighting Lennox Lewis that we never saw either. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have seen a prime version of that. All right. So who is your number two greatest trilogy of all time, my man? Mine, it, my greatest, and it, and, it, and, it, and it hits home because our families were so involved in this, and we were torn. It was like watching um, two of your oldest brothers skin in a fight, bro. And it had been uh, Morales versus Barrera, bro. That Honestly, bro, that's my number two. Normally, I would change it, but... I'm going to keep it at my number two also. So yes. we can go back and forth. Go ahead. Yes. Um, um, it was a highly anticipated fight. Both of them, you know, uh, uh, they fought. In and the first fought, fight was in 2000, bro. 20, yeah. almost 24 years 23 years. years. 24 23 years ago, years yeah. ago right? Whatever. All right. Yeah, whatever. And, um, dude, Morales won. He, he won by split decision, bro. I, guess, I was pissed off. But but I was I was because I, I was more of a Barrera fan, right? Than I was. I mean, I love both of them, bro. It's like right. loving your both brothers, right? right but right, right. I was a huge Barrera <laughs> fan, and and, yeah. and 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 bro, I've never seen a slugfest like that, bro. Where yeah. it was, a, dude, seesaw battle from beginning to end. The pre-fight. The 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 how do you say it? the the pre fight the the highlights whatever uh, 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 uh you know where they meet up to talk about the fight I don't forget I can't think about it right yeah. now yeah. um 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 dude everything was built up it was right. built up huge I mean Barrera threw a punch to Morales ba 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 I mean it was built up huge they and then on the second fight on the second fight. Uh, uh, Barrera finally won by unanimous uh, decision, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And 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 finally, Barrera ended it, bro. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it was named Fight fight of the Year in 20 in 2004, the third fight, and the third fight. Yeah, mm. it, it was one of the greatest fights trilogies. I, you know what, man, it I hate that I have it in number two, I hate it yeah. that I have it number two. But I got well, look, a little bit better than that. But go ahead. I got, I got my, I got, you know what, bro? I'm going to change mine. <laughs> you inspired me. But let me comment on yours. Yeah. Eric Morales versus Mark. You know what that fight was, bro? It was a fan, a fight for the boxing fans, bro. Yeah. You know, the other fight that I'm going to say is my number two is for the people. And if that doesn't tell you what the answer is, it's pretty obvious. But for, for me, what that fight was, bro, people from the first fight to the third fight, everybody, it didn't matter what race you were. It didn't matter if you were a heavyweight fan or I hate the, the, fe the featherweight division or the lightweight division. I'm more of a middleweight, super lightweight, heavyweight kind of guy. If you were a boxing fan, you love every single one of those rounds, bro. The war that they went into, my for me, in my opinion, was sublime. And honestly, to me, it is the greatest trilogy. Me so, too. Me too. It is the greatest trilogy. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so I'm going to give you my number two. All right. I'm going to change it up. And I'm going to go to, obviously, uh, Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier. That's my number two. Uh, look, bro, I got to give all respect to re respect is due. I know a lot of our YouTube guys don't like to talk about the older fights, but that is a fight that for most people will have number one, the greatest trilogy of all time. But like I was saying with Morales and Barrera, with that was more of a fight for boxing fans. This one was more for the people. There was a lot of hysteria going on. For the first fight at Madison Square Garden, the fight of the century where Ali was going to get out of his suspension. And here's what the amazing thing about that fight was. Nobody wanted to fight Joe Frazier at this time. And what really impresses me, why Ali is the greatest, 
Okay, I know you and I have had episodes on uh, Pacquiao's the greatest ever, uh, Mayweather's the greatest ever. For me, while why why Ali is number one, and here is the Kickstarter, is because not even five months after getting uh, out from his suspension, he challenges the main guy, Joe Frazier. He has two tuna fights against uh, who was it? I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, Query and Bonaventura, and then he gets into the ring with the boogeyman that know the southpaw that nobody wants to fight that has a left hook that would have sent Sonny Lip- Liston's left hook into oblivion. Okay, maybe that's a little over top, over the top, but <laughs> bro, to hmm. me, the reason why it's number two and it goes down to this the second fight, I thought, in my opinion. Muhammad Ali controlled that fight from the opening bell to the last bell. And, you know, he won by unanimous decision, if I'm not mistaken. So, but the thrill in Manila, we had an entire episode on that. That's where they almost died in the ring. To me, if that third fight did not look that way, I think this trilogy probably would have looked like, and if I'm taking your number one, I apologize. Probably would have looked like when Ali fought Ken Norton, where Ken Norton, you know, had his way with Ali. Many people believe Ken Norton won all three fights. I think even Ali admitted that that Ken Norton won the majority of those fights, if I'm not mistaken. So if it wasn't for that second fight, the fight of the year, I think it was coin or the super fight. Um, I think in my opinion, it would be without a doubt, number one. But to me, it's the fight for the people, the casual fan. The Hollywood celebrity, the politicians that were involved in Ma- in Muhammad Ali's uh, transformation to coming back, you know, it was more of a, fa- a fight for the people for me. So, you have any thoughts on my number two? Yeah, it it, it was huge, bro. The, the, for the reason being, um, mm-hmm. Muhammad Ali, bro, was a world recognized uh, personality, boxer. You right. know, um, he had a following. And mm-hmm. and and at the time, it meant a lot for a lot of people. Sure. And um, I mean, it still does. But it was it was huge, you mm-hmm. know. It, it, it your your it's like your leader. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Your leader's gonna get up in the ring to fight, like the way many people looked at Manny Pacquiao. Right. You know, it's the same way people were looking at uh, Muhammad Ali. And right. So it was huge, man. Uh, um, I mean, dude. When I saw those fights, bro, what I love mm-hmm. about Joe Frazier mm-hmm. is he was like David versus Goliath. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like he was, he, he punched up. So, mm-hmm. you know, he, he was punching up and he never changed his style. He, you know, he, he fought the way he fought all, you know, all rounds, 15 rounds, mm-hmm. whatever it was. Yeah. And, um, Dude, he, he was one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, both. And right. um, it was it was about sure, just will, bro. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. will, um, the heart of both fighters. It was a story, man. And uh, it will forever be remembered as one of the greatest, you know, trilogies of all time in the heavyweight division. Boxing and all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, look, I'll end it with this on that one, bro. Like, when I... To when I rewatch those fights and all the research I've done on it, you know, you know, being a historian myself, look, when Ali came back after his suspension, he looked different. He was a little bit softer. He wasn't as cut. He wasn't as fast. He just didn't look like the Ali we knew in the 60s, knocking out Liston and everyone, uh, Floyd Patterson at that time, being lights above everybody else. I want to see how, what would boxing or even world history outside of sports, what would it have looked like if Ali never had that suspension? You know, how much more dominant could he have been? You know, I was watching a video on YouTube the other day saying that Ali is overrated. And I'm like, what is happening here? It has like 100 million views. I'm envious of it. You know, I don't know if it was a clickbait kind of episode, but bro, it's like, if you get a three-year suspension and then you come back and then you fight the guy nobody wants to fight and you take him 
it takes a leaping left hook to beat him in the fight of the century. Bro, I mean, that just goes to show you the greatness and the levels that both of these fighters were, much less Muhammad Ali. So that is my number two. So drum roll, please. What is your number one, my man? My number one is Manny Pacquiao versus Juan Manuel Marquez, bro. Ooh, I bro, love I, you know, I remember this day like it was yesterday, bro. Yeah. And, bro, when you see your superhero, bro, mm -hmm. your man, for me being Marquez at the time, when you see your guy get dropped three times, bro, the, yeah. the, 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 the barbecue's hot. The beers are cold, bro. And you turn yeah. around and look at your TV, bro. And you see your guy getting floored three times in the first round on the right, first fight, right. bro. Dude. But still. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not to cut you off, but still, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And when you see that, bro, and still see Marquez getting up and giving the fight of his life. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, will, strength. A desire, dedication, heart, more than anything you've ever seen in your life, bro. Mm -hmm. And those wars that he had with Manny Pacquiao, bro, were not just... They were not like, like Barrera or Morales. Right. It, it, the, the fights between Pacquiao and Marquez were brutal, bro. Dude. They Thumping, were brutal. Dude, they were brutal. I mean, I dude, blood all over the place. These fights were brutal, man. And, um, dude, hats off to Marquez. Hats off to Pacquiao. Dude, th those are those type of fights would have ended people's careers, man. Honestly, dude, all I mean, it's not a really a trilogy because they fought four times, but uh -huh. dude, they all, besides the last one with the infamous knockout where, where memes were becoming a thing, and you can honestly say Pacquiao was one of the first memes ever, especially in sports. You can honestly say, bro, they fought 36 rounds all by thumping each other to death. Marquez, probably pound for pound, one of the greatest, to me, top five greatest counterpunchers of all time, bro. And the way he loves to counterpunch with that hit, punching with, with his complete torso and back and legs. I'm surprised Pacquiao even survived that. And that, that just goes to show you, bro. The levels and the greatness that Pacquiao was. Dude, he had a trilogy with Morales. He had all multiple rematches with Barrera. This guy, look, you want to fight three times? You want to fight four times? He didn't have to fight him the fourth time. He already had the edge on Marquez. And he still took the risk, bro. Where Marquez was this, this, was this hungry boxer, brother. So that's my thoughts on that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, and look, and look, and 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 I remember, of course, we were talking about this fight. I just remember, bro, that when the fourth fight, when Pacquiao got knocked out, let's not forget, people. Let's not forget. Yeah. Pacquiao, was, going. Pacquiao was destroying Marquez. Marquez, Dude, he was backed into a corner, mm -hmm. bleeding, com blood coming out of his nose, his mouth, all over the place. Pacquiao was in for the kill. He yeah. just wanted to put him out of his misery. He got caught. Dude, and that was it. If you remember in that fight, I think it was the second or third round. Dude, Marquez got knocked down Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the fact that he gets back up and after that, when he got knocked down, dude, I honestly think if the, I honestly think it goes the other way. If there were 10 more seconds in that round, it would have been Marquez on the ground, probably done for the fight right there, in my opinion. If there yeah. was 10, 20 more seconds left, that fight would have been over. Except you're right, dude. He just got caught, brother. He yeah. got caught, man. You know, yeah. and uh, it was one of the most brutal trilogies I've ever seen in my life, man. It was uh, I one of my favorite reactions in boxing history to me that is up there and that's that really nobody talks about you know there's a lot from uh commentators like down goes frazier right uh uh lampley talking about holyfield against Bo. coincidentally talking about his heart and spirit and being a warrior when roy jones they're talking with jim lampley and all of a sudden pacquiao goes down just in an instant and you see roy jones go oh Hey. Doesn't really realize how close Pacquiao has gotten to him. 
Marquez was off balance again. Now gets his feet back and tries to roar back the nail pack out with the right hand. Oh! That's another knockdown. He's not getting Will up, Jim. He get up? He's not Will getting up, Jim. He get up? He's not getting up. No, he's been knocked out. A sensational right hand knockout by a bloodied Juan Manuel Marquez. And here comes Marquez followed with the overhand right. You see that? Pacquiao Bill, missed right the right the hand. He knew he was coming. He just caught his rhythm. And it was like a real reaction that probably 95% of all viewers reacted the exact same way. You know, classic number one, bro. I, I'm with it. Um, let me give you my number one. What's up? And it's actually your number two, Eric Morales versus uh, Barrera, Marco Antonio. Look, I'm going to add this, bro. Normally, I like to change it up, but bro, like, like I said in response to your re to to your answer, that was a fight for boxing fans. And what I loved about every single one of those twelve rounds was you saw a rainbow of cultures in the background of the audience in the people, and they were all. It was every single one of those fights, especially those ten those championship rounds that you and I have had discussions on whether they're real championship rounds or not. But it was a standing room every single one of those times because it didn't matter if you were a novice of a boxing fan, you were watching something special. And they brought it for 36 straight rounds nonstop. To me, in my opinion, I actually had Barrera winning that first fight. You know, I've I, I rewatched it a couple of times since you and I made that bet and I won the bet because I had Morales. Mm. But I think Barreto won that fight and by three or four rounds, you and I need to do an episode on that. We got to do that. We got to do that. Yeah. And the funny thing is the second fight, I actually had Morales winning. So it was, you know, I'm opposite. So, but that third fight that finalized it, bro, another classic. I think the first and the third fight were fight of the years. And I think the second fight would have been fight of the year. But I think, and I know... Uh, our fans out there, our audience out there is going to get mad at us that we didn't include this fight. I think the reason why the second fight of the year, I could be wrong, somebody in the comments correct me, was uh, Ring Magazine had uh, Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward the fight of the year when the second fight happened, which was a spectacular time for boxing. So that is why I also have in my number one. I know that was your number two, but any boxing fights, any trilogies you left off, man? Yeah, it was the Mickey Ward and, and Arturo Gatti fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, come on. I mean, that was huge, bro. I, I, I remember seeing those fights, man, and, 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 and it was sad to see both guys getting beat so bad, man. Right, but they just, right. none of them wanted to lose. And, right. and uh, beautiful fights, man. What about you? Did you leave another one out? Well, look, uh, for me, you know, I think it was Norton and Ali because there's been controversy that Norton won all those fights, every all three of those fights. And, you know, I, 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 wasn't, I, was, I wasn't born yet when those fights happened, but I remember my uncle and my father talking about that Norton was a better fighter than what people thought. And people saw that when against Ali. So... For me, it would be that one, and also, of course, Ward and and Gotti. What made Ward and Gotti special? I know. I think Ward had the fight of the year the year before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. But, dude, like, I remember. I was actually working with you at the time, but I remember saying somebody said, "Hey, let's go watch the Mickey Ward fight," and I was like, oh, "I got something else to do," and I missed it, bro. And everybody for that whole weekend, the next week was talking about, you got to watch the fight. You got to watch the fight. And when I saw the replay, oh, man, it was legendary. What made it special for me, though, was that I wasn't expecting that that much, that kind of fireworks into this fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I could see why that one was one we missed. All right, guys. So in the comments, go ahead and give us some other fights that you think that we left off. Sam, do you have any final words for our audience? Yeah, hey, thank you guys for helping us reach 500. Hopefully, we can get higher in uh, subscribers. Like and comment. And uh, if there's any topic y'all wanted to talk about, 
leave it in the comment section and we'll cover it. Absolutely, guys. And I like, to, and I, as I always like to say, don't forget to stick a move, baby. I am the greatest. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. Oh, dude, she's doing it now. Stick and move. Wait, can you understand? Stick and move.